So we're here. <sighs> we're here. Yeah. Our, in in the new digital age. Our mm-hmm. first remote episode. Technically. 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 We, Unless we manage to release that other bit of nonsense at some point. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I'll have to listen through and make sure that Shane wasn't problematic, but... Yeah, because I'm the issue. <laughs> yeah, so I'm the asshole here. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I can submit myself. There is apparently a podcast called Am I the Asshole that uh, one of our friends is doing. Oh, yeah, you should. You should submit to that. Yeah, so I'll submit and be like, so, here's the deal. I have, you know, like... A series of strokes and panic attacks on a podcast, and I impugn a large number of people and say I want to kill them with a chainsaw, and I get concerned text messages from friends of ours. Did you actually get a text message? Several. (laughs) We're we're referring to last week's episode, uh, let's call it the cold open to last week. (laughs) Yes. So, uh, and by the way, while we're here, by the eternal, behold. Behold, Behold, it's the Disinformed Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm John. And I'm Michael. And yes, apparently my uh, inflammatory comments on last week's episode caused a severe cause for alarm for a number of people who texted me like, are you okay? Are you really stressed <laughs> out? Because I listened to last week's episode and uh, your rage was palpable. To which you responded, I was in the moment. I am fine now. <laughs> To which I'm always like, have you not been around me for more than five minutes? Like, if you're just a casual listener to the podcast, you've never met me in your life, I can understand you might not get that I'm being, attempting, attempting to be funny by just, you know, spouting random nonsense and rhetoric from time to time. But no, I'm I'm not losing my mind. If I had, I already would have been, like, out in traffic shooting people. So... Yeah. <laughs> What's the... Uh, Ooh. You, you talked about it a while ago. I think you talked about it in reference to your grandpa. Uh, but it's that Margot song, Margot the Nuclear So-and-So is beating off in public. Uh-huh. And that, that whole song is basically just a song about your family. Yes. Mama, get him off my lawn. Yeah. Everybody knows uh, Everybody knows he is a ticking time bomb. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Did I actually... So, Michael, were you ever present for that? Did you hear that discussion? No. Can't say that happened. That one of the lines of the song is uh, he started buying guns in Phoenix, and uh, the, it basically talks about the individual beating off in public as a sign that they were losing their mind. And uh, my grandfather, uh, forgive me for those who may be listening who know this, uh, was caught doing so at one point. Oh. And it was quite a black mark on the family record for a good long while, um, and some people are, are very ashamed of that fact and i'm going eh, it's the facts of life sometimes you just got to do things but um <laughs> yeah, if you gotta jerk it so, you gotta jerk it you know yeah, yeah so it's uh he started beating off in public and then the next step is he started buying guns in phoenix and you're like oh wow well, my, yeah my grandfather collected an awful lot of firearms so that's funny and then later in the song they say mama get him off my lawn Now, this cracked everybody in my family up when we heard this because my grandfather, at one point when my sister was moving into a new house in the great city and province of uh, Sholo slash Pine Top, Arizona, for those of you who enjoy that, you know, she doesn't live there anymore, so we're fine. My grandfather was going door to door up her block, pulling up bits of grass from everybody's yard to compare them to the sod that was just put down in front of their house. What? Um, I, I mean, I guess comparisons, you know, making sure you're getting the right bang for your buck, but, uh, it um, makes no sense. It really yeah. doesn't. There's just no way to rationally say that he should have, or would have been doing that in a, you know, just world. Hey, so. why is my, why is my daughter's sod so much worse than yours? I want to speak like, to the manager. Yeah. It's like, who are you going to call up and <laughs> lambast for his, like, this is not green enough. I'm afraid friends, uh, call the sod police. <sighs> <laughs> sod, but true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, uh, uh, I'm going to need some grass to recover from that joke. I think. Yeah. Bury I'm, me. I'm dead. I'm your truth. Telling lies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually just watched the making of the black record before we went into the studio. If I think I may have already touched on this, but yeah. Uh, uh, you touched on watching some kind of monster stock because you wanted to see like the, the hyper end of like failure and uh, yes. you know, collapsing on yourself. 
So I watched them recording the Black Album as well. I have a classic albums for the Black Album, oh. which is very interesting. It's it's worth watching. That would yeah, be cool. a lot of fun. Yeah. Nice. Well, so let's do a little, uh, you know, let's check in with everybody. How's, uh, how, how are we all faring in this new strange world? Uh, my exact response to the same question from my boss today was, I am having severe urges to reenact the opening sequence of Fahrenheit 451 in our government documents by the end of this day, so we may be closed for a few days. <laughs> I don't understand uh... the reference. <laughs> <laughs> Uncultured swine. <laughs> Fahrenheit 451 is a book about burning books. That's what Sparknotes told me. What about Bernie? <laughs> well, he's going to be here in a couple of weeks. On the campaign trail, he's here he's talking here. about healthcare. I am once again asking for your burning books. <laughs> Yo, I'm here. I'm once again asking if you're done. <laughs> you're done. Feel the bun. <laughs> um Michael the bun? How, Michael, how are you doing? What? Uh I'm I'm alive. I got my jobs. I guess that's as best as uh I can say. Corona didn't take my gerbs. Not or, yet. Yeah. It's coming down. Well <laughs> uh, they'd have to they'd have to close some shit down in order for me to not for me to lose either of my jobs, so Yeah, well I mean on one end, I mean like you I mean that's pretty uh you know substantial. You can edit that if you want. Um but then I mean I guess I guess hungry. You see how big my eyes got when he said it. Yeah, uh, I, I, I guess hungry Howie's has been used to poisoning people for the better part of since they opened originally. So you're safe there too. Oh yeah, yeah. We're essential. We're important. Uh, Listen, so they're not going to close us down because we provide food to the hungry masses. I am not going to let you sit there and impugn the good goddamn name of Hungry Howie's. <laughs> they have flavored crust, Mister Watkins, and it's Trademark. delectable. Whenever I want to feel my insides slowly liquefy, um, I eat Hungry Howie's to remind myself. I, I love it. But you know you know what my true Tempe staple is? Uh, Shane should, might remember it. it Prostitutes? Prostitute! Uh, Prostitute! <laughs> no, it's uh, Gus's. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember Gus's. When I was living off that apartment off of uh, Scottsdale in the 202, uh, they would acquiesce my request to make the world's most disgusting pizza um which essentially was a knockoff version of a buffalo pizza so what is it shane how, how do we order it it's uh, uh you ordered a cheese pizza with no sauce add hot sauce and range <laughs> that's an abomination <laughs> uh, i mean like we sell versions of that like you could get a barbecue ch or a, a buffalo chicken pizza or you can get a chicken bacon ranch pizza we'll put see, either on there the reason john did this is that he didn't want to have to pay the extra money that one would have to pony up for a uh, buffalo chicken pizza yeah <laughs> oh so i understand would, that yeah, yeah yeah so he just you know it saved what i think a few like, like two at bucks least, yeah it was at Worth. least two to three dollars yeah so but the, the special thing about Gus's is that they, they were a new or they are new york style slices so the pizza was gargantuan for starters, like they're large, but secondarily, because of how they cook it, like they're not equipped to make that kind of pizza, uh, like just stylistically. So it was basically just like cheese, hot sauce and ranch just gooped onto like just the world's most disgusting bread. And if you ate more than like a slice, you were, you were squirting brown for the next three days. And I, I ate there probably like two times a week for the, the four years I lived in that apartment. Ouch. Yeah, no John like basically, he became Mr. Fusion at that point, I think. I, uh... <laughs> just things happening in his small <laughs> intestine that could have transported him to another space and time. I watched uh, Burt Kreiser's new stand-up last week, and he he was talking briefly. He's like, about, you know, taking a shit. And he's like, what, you guys also, you don't do the, like, the lava burst? You know, where it uh, s splashes back onto the underside of your uh, your lid, so when you when someone lifts it up to pee, they don't just see spackles of like <laughs> shit. <laughs> and he said that, and I uh, I felt I felt uh, attacked a little bit because I've done I, I do that. Uh, it's been Triggered. it's been known. That would have been one of the points in my relationship where I think Melissa and I probably would have turned to one another and been like, Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for real, that that happens. <laughs> 
also i've cleaned the toilet bowl i've seen that um i watched tom segura's new stand-up last night which i would recommend on netflix it's called ball hog and he uh has a bit and it reminded me of shane um so he's talking oh. he's talking about thinking about like how long you've been with your significant other or your partner and how many times you guys have had sex. And he, it's in the context of like him and his wife or you and or like me and my wife. And how many times you've uh, had sex and, you know, can't really count it. Like and if you do, you're a psycho. Um, and then essentially tying it back into calling your wife a cum dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that direction there. <laughs> But I was then, like, oh, it's a it's a good serious conversation. Come dumpster. Oh, and then he well. takes it over and he goes. So in which case, your mom. <laughs> 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 and then immediately I thought about how Shane has probably just dumped so many loads into my mom. <laughs> <laughs> if we haven't already had this discussion, I don't ejaculate into things. <laughs> It's against my religion, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was told if I was not trying to create another life, <laughs> that, you know, it would be a sin. And so that is why I run screaming through the house going, the devil is in my penis. And, uh, you know. Oh, good gravy. Screaming cum dumpster. Uh, well, guys, I, I might need some tips and tricks on what to do with my time because effective uh, tomorrow... I have two weeks off of work. You oh. have exhausted your ability to make fart noises at your wife. <laughs> it has a it doesn't have as much mileage as you think it would. <laughs> but are, have you adhered to the Family Guy principle of wait until it's not funny and makes the person angry, and then do it another twenty times, and then it'll go around to being funny again? You're describing my marriage in vivid detail. <laughs> Jesus. I've, I've studied it often enough, I think. <laughs> and writing a paper on it. <laughs> at this point, she just looks at me and she goes, hey, I, I just don't want to be harassed anymore. And I go, I'm not trying to harass you. She goes, well, you're talking to me. And I'm like, that, oh. <laughs> it's, it's only harassment if I'm grabbing one of your, you know, body parts at the time. Did I mention last week that I've encouraged her to sexually harass me? You have not, but that stands to reason. I mean, it, it's in keeping with your character. I've Makes told sense. her that nothing would make me happier than just to be physically accosted by the genitals. Um, like, just <laughs> randomly. Like, I was like, yeah, like, I, if I'm doing dishes, you can just walk up from behind me and just grab me right by the dick. And I'm fine with it. You can you can use it as a leash. I, I encourage it, please. And then in exchange, you know, I get to, you know, smack your booty and, you know, cop a feel whenever I want. I feel like these are fair terms. I mean, I feel like that's called marriage. Or yeah. equality, really. Yeah, <laughs> equity for all involved. <laughs> that's the kind of world I want to live in. Um, also, I don't know if you guys saw. Sorry, I know that we're jumping around a bit, but um, did you get the sad, somber news that we predicted weeks ago? Huh? Phoenix Fan Anna. Fusion? Yes, I oh. did. I just saw that this afternoon. So yes, it has been rescheduled uh, to September. So we're going to be pulling the taffy a bit on how long we're going to have some time to research, which is good for us. It is good. Because we can do a bit more build up. Yeah. Um, also, I, I'm i using this time to finish The Dark Tower and I'm almost done with book five. I think I got about 150 pages left. Um, say thank you. <laughs> big, big. Um and I am not losing steam. I am I'm committed now already. Like I'm going to use most of this time to just finish the Dark Tower. So uh, hopefully I'll have it read way ahead of the schedule, even if we were planning for May originally. So maybe now I can actually do a, like a reread of it, which I wouldn't have had time to do prior. So yeah, shoot, and I might try and get some um, some hill in as well. You that can would do be it. Well worth yeah. doing. Yeah, I'll get on that um, horns. You, you guys I, requested in the, the mini-sode. Well, yes. John requested in the mini-sode. Fair. I, I still stand by Heart-Shaped Box is a good place to start. Or if you just want to get a tonal idea for his writing style, you can start with either of the collections of short stories because Strange Weather's fantastic. And uh, 20th Century Ghosts has a lot of really fun material in it. And it's, you know, bite-sized, so you can take it in chunks. Okay. All right. Like John's, like John's marriage. Take it in chunks. <laughs> 
you know, yeah. we, we kind of have the same approach to marriage as we do with the uh, the COVID, which is just one day at a time. Isolation and uh, masturbation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quarantine. Order delivery. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, where's my pizza, asshole? I've been waiting. For uh, you're out now. of. You're now out of our delivery range, so. Yeah, I'm not yeah. out of your delivery range. How about you get a little more proactive and bring that shit? Sorry, he only delivers if you have a daughter. But uh, <laughs> out. <laughs> what did you? I kind of burned. What did you just do to your vocal? <laughs> I don't know. Michael just caused his own stuff to you know combust. What? You're humming now. I'm humming now. You are starting this. You are starting this to hum. Let me go ahead and call a pause. Oh Jesus Christ! Okay. Um. You sound better now. That was weird. Don't touch anything. Literally, don't touch a goddamn thing. Don't even breathe. I hear <gasps> you breathing. <laughs> that was weird. All right. Well, that's going to be fun to edit. Um. Yeah. So. Why is it, it's like peaking. Is it auto-adjusting my sound or something? Why is it doing that? So, Shane, I think I can throw in like 20, how much were these blues? Like 20 bucks? Yeah. Um, they were 60, I believe. Well, what? I, oh. I have 30 on it. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm more than willing to invest in a shittier microphone than the one that you are currently fucking up. No, I think, it, I think it's audacity. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on. Listen. <laughs> It's always somebody else's problem here, Michael, and I don't think that that stands out anymore. I, uh, I don't know. I freaked it out or something. I, I don't... don't look forward to your public oh. defender. <laughs> it... All of a sudden, Michael's just going to be raving. Jack. It was the Jews that did it. It wasn't <laughs> me. There's no uh. way it could have been me. I bought a really expensive microphone. I don't know how to work. Man, I just... How? Michael is the Mel Gibson of our podcast. Apparently. Well, do we want, do you want me to snap back? No, we're keeping all of that in there, I think. Uh, you know, oh, other than maybe Yeah, I'm fine with it. Let him edit what he wants. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna have to accost Michael more than, oh, you know, man. ten to twelve times an episode just to keep ourselves on kill. Well jeez. So. Let's let's make good on our promises that we've made, gentlemen. And uh, we actually have a topic this week. We do, in fact, mm -hmm. have an actual legitimate research topic that has nothing to do with a plague. And I am, as of right now, going to officially call that as of, from this point forward, we are going to pretend that that thing does not exist, has never happened, and we're just going to refuse to mention it I love at it. all. Absolutely love it. Um, we're going to go in the <clears throat> blind because it's easier, and I think it's nice to just forget that there's a nightmare going on outside the doors. So and, I like it. Yeah, I like it. Now, admittedly, we have fallen off of formatting <laughs> for yes. a long time, so let's try and get back into some good habits here now that the world isn't ending around us because nothing exists outside of these rooms. Stop um, breaking it. <laughs> Shane, what is the premise of what we do? So if you are unfamiliar with the format of this show, and if you just started listening, hi, welcome. He's Michael. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Where am okay. I? <laughs> what year is it? So uh, we present an esoteric or obscure topic for your consumption, and the individual presenting is going to subsequently or subsequently, in Michael Parlance, lie about said topic while we're informing you about it. It is then incumbent upon the two co-hosts of the podcast, for this episode being John and myself, to call out those lies as they are happening in the moment, like a lightning strike in the midst of a major storm, so that we can get credit for absolutely nothing. Yeah, the, it's, it's the who's line approach, right? Indeed, the points are worth nothing and no one wins. Also, no hugging and no learning. No touching. If I retained information from this podcast, I would be very alarmed. Well, <laughs> uh, luckily, you don't have to retain anything other than water. And beer. But there is water in yes. beer. So. There is, indeed. And so, by the end of the episode, regardless of what happens, whether we guess the uh, lies correctly or not, we will have sort of an unveiling at the end, an unboxing, if you will, of what the lies were, just so that you don't leave misinformed or disinformed. 
Hopefully that should be sufficient, gentlemen. Does that sound reasonable enough for all involved parties? Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I like it. So, Michael, what in Quab's holy name are you talking to us about this week? So today I'm going to cover a little bit of young earth creationism and uh, maybe touch upon some creationist science. Uh, here I uh, I really enjoyed their first three albums, but once the auto tune mumblecore thing started happening, I was not in. Mm, yeah, mumblecore. That sounds like an interesting genre of music or porn. Mumble porn. Oh, I actually really enjoy mumblecore porn. <laughs> yeah, you want to give it to me really hard in my asshole right now, don't you? I bet you can feel it. Oh, are we doing an ASMR episode again? I think we are. No, yes, we're gonna touch no, it no. This is really gonna mess oh, with this my game goodness. when he's editing, so I really hope it's really hard for him to do all this. Oh, I'm just gonna stuff. mute all my internet connection is unstable. What the fuck does that mean? Well, you're unstable, so it would stand to reason that your internet would fall asleep. Oh. No. Okay. Anyway, we'll just press <laughs> onward. I don't even care anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the um I'm gonna butcher this, but the omphalos. Omphalos? Omphalos. It's- it is omphalos. Oh, cool. So you, you already know that. Stumbled I, um, into grace, didn't you? The ballad <laughs> of Omphalos, as a matter of fact, is what it refers to. What is the ah. ballad of Omphalos? It is a transcribed song or ballad that is supposed to be the first transcribed bit of music in history, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, Michael? word? Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know that. Um, well, I'm congratulations. About something different, but okay. Yeah, so the, the ballad or the song of Omphalos is supposed to be, it is a poem that was written with musical notes uh, accompanied and sort of like rhyme and meter. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I learned this from the Black Tapes podcast. For those who may be interested, you can go and okay. investigate. It's, it features prominently in their plot for the second season. Hmm. Well, fantastic. So... Mm-hmm. We will start with the Omphalos hypothesis, which was an attempt to reconcile scientific evidence. That How about the reconcile? Is... Reconcile? Re- Let's go reconcile. 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 Did I say... Anyway. Well, you better cheek to... yourself before you reek yourself, okay? Uh, it's pretty much them trying to... It's. It was an attempt to rec- reconcile... Well done. <laughs> Scientific evidence that the universe is billions of years old with the Genesis creation narrative. Uh, It is based on the religious belief that the universe was created uh, by a divine being within the past 10,000 years. And that the presence of objective, verifiable evidence that the universe is much older is entirely due to the creator introducing false evidence that makes the universe appear that way. So, dumbing it down. Yeah, I was going to say, pretend that I'm me. And I'm what some might call special. So the idea (laughs) is essentially, if I'm understanding correctly, that the divine creator who has intelligently designed this universe then also created other things to lead us astray from the fact that the universe was only created a short time ago. So it's back to the Alice in Chains principle, the devil put dinosaurs here. So anything exactly. that we utilize for evidence to prove scientifically that the universe is older than the purported few thousand years B.C., A.D., uh, is a lie to test your faith. So mm-hmm. kind of like how Michael spent more money on his microphone, but we use our cheaper ones better? Is that the same? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, but I Can mean, we... you're not wrong. Uh, um. <laughs> Yeah, no, you you pretty much hit it on the butt. Um, on the whatever you hit it. Oh, you he always it. he always hits it on the butt. Jesus Trust me, Christ. I've seen him with his wife. It's actually pronounced debit. Debit. <laughs> debit. Um, no, yeah, you described it pretty well. It. I got this idea from your from last Thursdayism, uh, which I mentioned very briefly two weeks ago. Which you um, also got from our you know discussion of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. So we're just mm-hmm. delineating down the path now. Yeah. Oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so the idea was named after the title of a 1857 book by a naturalist known as Philip Henry Goss, G-O-S-S-E, um, in which he argued that in order for the world to be, air quotes, functional... God must have created the earth with mountains and canyons and trees with growth wi- rings, growth wi- growth <laughs> rings. In that Someone Adam- call a doctor. Uh, this uh, is too uh, pure and beautiful. 
Yes. And that Adam and Eve uh, also had to be created with hair, fingernails, and navels. And a little piece of trivia, uh, omphalos is actually Greek for navel. Bullshit. Nope. True. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and that, therefore, no empirical evidence about the age of the Earth or universe can be taken as reliable. Uh, the only thing he argues that is reliable is the fact that we exist, which he mentions as, I think, therefore, I am. So, so are we saying, though, that the Song of Omphalos is basically called this... navel-gazing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why when you mentioned it, I was like, oh, that's actually quite odd, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> so cool little Personally, info there. I prefer shoegaze, but, I mean, navel-gaze is uh, definitely uh, an avenue that I, I would explore at some point. I don't think I'm ready for it yet. John, I would say navel gaze is something that you have been doing since you were like 13 years old when you're trying to ejaculate into it. <laughs> <laughs> All those other kids got to have that fancy like get the ball in the cup game and John just got to get his nut in the cup and it was entirely different, <laughs> but still challenging. Or my uncles, come on. No, your uncles also got to ejaculate in there, yes. <laughs> yeah, and the one that finished last had to drink it. Uh, that's the, uh, yeah, that is coyote ugly if I have ever heard it appropriately defined in my life. So essentially, Michael, the, the point of this all sent is like uh, God just did things to be as efficient as he possibly could. Well, I think Shane kind of described it pretty efficiently um, that it was kind of almost as a test that in order for everything to work, uh, he needed to create mountains, canyons, trees. Uh, Adam and Eve had to have belly buttons, stuff like that, because if they were created, they had to, like, they weren't birthed normally, so they wouldn't have had an umbilical cord. Okay. Um, and that, no, you can't really prove anything otherwise, um, which the leads I... into, oh, sorry? I'm sorry, please continue. Which leads into the next point that the overall concept is both unverifiable and unfalsifiable through any conceivable scientific study. Uh, in other words, it is impossible, even in principle, to subject it to any form of test by reference to empirical data, because that data is considered to have been arbitrarily created uh, to look the way they do. Um, I actually came up with a description. I'll read it, but it's like I argue that uh, have you have either of you read the novel Flatland? No, I can't say that I have. Oh, it's actually it's a really good book. It's like probably 100 pages or something like that. It's a very easy read. Any pictures? No. Uh, it's actually all about objects and stuff, but it's it's essentially, it's the idea that um, the main character is a square, like literally a 2D object, a 2D shape. Not just a fucking uh, living. Nerd. Okay. Uh, living in a two-dimensional plane, um, and then he dreams about a three-dimensional object, a sphere, taking him into the three-dimensional world, and then also showing him the one-dimensional and the zero-dimensional worlds. It's, it's a math, it was written by a mathematician, but it's a really interesting read because it, it makes you think about like what, like how your imagination can be constrained by thinking inside the box, per se. Um, Pun intended. So I guess, Michael, huh? I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. That, that book sounds just uh, so boring. Oh, Okay, whatever. <laughs> and I said, I, fun intended <laughs> for thinking inside the box because he was a square. Yes, I, I, that's why I, uh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, so then, never mind. I was going to talk about the first half of the novel Flatland, but oh, since fun. neither of you read it, it's, well, no, I mean, like, it was just a, I was talking about the idea of unverifiable and unfalsifiable, like, you can't prove things. I was going to make a connection, but since it would be lost, I'm not going to do that. So, moving on to the next point. Um, well, I think there's also a, a major sort of deontological argument that from theologians believing that God's time is different from our time. And so, like, you know, saying that God created the universe and the earth in seven days, essentially saying, well, you know, it's not our days. It's not, you know, as we reckon time, God reckons time differently. So, you know, the snap of a finger to him could be, you know, millions of years to us. 
And so there's an argument that sort of attempts to reconcile scientific principles with the idea of creationism in that respect. Yeah. But if you are going from a purely orthodox perspective, that's a little difficult to reconcile because it's sort of like, no, 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 it was your seven days. Mm-hmm. Like, so really? That, that actually is a, that's a good uh, se- seg- se- Sigourney segue. Um, good, into- good, good, good. <laughs> It's like a the... monkey fucking a football, sir. Just... <laughs> um, so that that hypothesis was widely rejected in the 19th century when Goss published his book, um, but it saw some revival in the 20th century by some young Earth creationists. Mm. Uh, so young Earth creationism is the belief that our planet and universe were created from nothing in seven days, approximately 6,000 years ago. By the God of the Abrahamic religions, adherence to uh, adherence of young Earth creationism are known as young Earth creationists, Go or figure. simply YEX, which I will probably just use that Y E C. I'll okay. probably just say that shorthand. YEX. Um, yes, yex. the yex. sound that the lead singer of Disturbed makes. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> their belief is. To... <laughs> no, wait, quick, everybody, do your best one. Shane, go. <laughs> Oh, you don't want that on a microphone. Do it. It's going to sound like a cat vomiting. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Wah! Yeah! Wah! All right, there we go. Um, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> cool. Hey, I heard that hey. noise this morning. By the way, <laughs> have you heard the radio edit of that song? I have not. They have had to cut off the entire back half of the song with the no mommy, don't do it again, oh, yeah, you're yeah, hurting yeah. me. It bothers me because it cuts out so much of the song i was like you cannot that's that is the song i showed my so we've devolved on this i'm sorry that i'm gonna go off the beaten path but i think john and i talked about this when this whole like disturbed resurgence happened with the sounds of silence there's like a whole new group of individuals that started ascribing this bizarre sort of christian you know ethos to them which is relevant to the topic but i mean they did also have like a couple of albums that have pseudo Christian themes to them, you know, where they're saying phrases like waiting for a modern Messiah and things like that. So I, I'll kind of run with it, but it's funny that if you show somebody who really loved the sounds of silence rendition, where they're like, Oh, disturbed is so awesome. And you go back and show them anything off of the sickness. (laughs) They don't believe it's the same band. Oh, you're like, no, this, this jackass here who is basically just retching and, you know, screaming into a microphone for half this thing and, you know, reliving his therapy sessions on a record (laughs) is now suddenly doing, Hello, darkness, my old friend. You know, ruining a otherwise perfect song. <laughs> like, oh, sir, you're not in Depeche mode. Knock that shit off. And also, why Anywho. are you more ashamed of yourself? <laughs> I mean, so. it, for someone who's been walking around with giant metal, like, hooks hanging out of the front of his face for over a decade, like, geez. Do you think those make you look attractive? I also, like, shudder at the thought of him having to go through a TSA to try to go on <laughs> tour, or they're like, take that shit out of your face. I just watched uh, The Matrix for the first time in a long time, during, like, one of my second-to-last shifts, and it just yeah. reminds me of the, the scene where he, they're walking into that uh, that office building, going through the metal detector, and they opens yeah. it up, and he sees all the guns, he's like, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> I have seen The Matrix, just in case you were going to ask, Shane. I hope. Or John. Well, I mean, yes. yeah. I mean, I, I mean the, the, the original Matrix is great. Yeah. Hey, one of you thinky people that can put words onto paper and research things, why don't you do uh, whether or not we're living in a simulation? No. I mean, Shane's it would be nodding. an interesting discussion for all of, you know, 10 minutes when I'm like, hey, have you read The Matrix? Yeah, have you read Vulcan's Hammer? Because I mean that, or the th- watched the Thirteenth Floor. Yeah, we can have a lot of like parallels in science fiction, maybe. But... Anyway, food for thought. Anyway, Michael, you're talking about uh, Ooh. morons. I also just watched Source Code recently, which is for one of our favorite listeners, Stephen, who let me borrow Stephen. it. Uh, anybody else seen Source Code? Is that Jake Gyllenhaal. It is Jake Gyllenhaal. Nope. It, it's like a Groundhog Day esque kind of movie, right? Essentially, he is plugged back into the sort of like dying thoughts of a group of people who endure a tragedy. So there's like a terrorist bomb placed on a train 
and they somehow are able to establish a link. And uh, Michael, you will really appreciate this because they talk about quantum mechanics. Yeah. Oh, goody. <laughs> being utilized. I'm already hard. So they can, uh, they're basically talking about like the idea that you create utilizing string theory, alternate realities every time that they plug back in through this system. And so he is able to keep reliving this same moment in order to, you know, study all the details of the moment, things that are happening in order to try to affect its resolution in real life. So to find the person who placed the bomb on the train, you from the sheer fact that like you're grimacing and you would hate this, you should watch it just so you can get upset about it. It's kind of like the same reason that I want to watch um, Velasa Velasio Pastor. I have no frame of reference for this. <laughs> um, it's another one of those sci-fi movies. I just saw it on Amazon Prime. Uh, so it's a velociraptor as a priest? So essentially this priest, I think... Oh, I'm not going to pull it up. The, the description says essentially that a priest <laughs> travels to a foreign country and then is endowed with a power that gives him the ability to turn into a dinosaur. And then oh! he's really, uh, you know, he's really just kind of like scared to use that power. But then a prostitute uh, motivates him to turn into a velociraptor. What's that dude? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have seen like, I think it was on like either Amazon Video or Netflix yeah. or something. I noticed it in passing and I was like, oh, I should really watch this because it looks like it's going to be a bad it's movie. It's only an hour and ten minutes. Mm. So if Jurassic Park, Transformers, and Orgasmo had a baby, it would be this movie. Yeah, but like sexier. Oh, okay. You didn't oh, think okay. Orgasmo was sexy? It was super sexy. I stand by my statement. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, Michael, all right. you were saying about people so, who believe that this earth was created in a week. So uh, their belief is derived from a literal interpretation of the two creation myths in the biblical book of Genesis. Uh, this means that young earth creationists believe the seven days described in Genesis were the standard 24-hour days and use uh, Anglican B Archbishop James Usher, U-S-S-H-E-R, uh, use his chronology or suitable alternative to date earth's creation to only a few thousand years ago. Um, this Anglican, because I actually know how to pronounce that word, uh, Anglican um, Archbishop used the genealogies, geneal, fuck yep. it, genealogies, okay. Gene bottom. cool, yep. sweet, yeah, sure, um, of people who begat, air quotes, other people mm. in the Old Testament to, uh, he determined that the world started a Sunday, October 23rd, uh, 4004 BCE. Yeah, sounds right. Can I, can I call bullshit on that? Nope. <laughs> well, I mean, you can. But I can. I plan to. Yes. Follow uh, up question. Uh, for Genesis's sake, are you more of like a lamb lays down on Broadway kind of Genesis person or like an invisible touch kind of Genesis person? I have no idea what you're talking about, and I'm kind of offended I'm more by like it. a Jesse Custer kind of Genesis. Well, I'm going to disagree patently with the both of you because Phil Collins <laughs> is a genius, and yeah. I love him. As well True. as I love Peter Gabriel, and so I'll take any form of Genesis you give me. Not hungry, I don't thanks. Care. Uh, you will be in a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, a firm belief in the biblical worldwide flood and the story of Noah is also a cornerstone of young earth creationism. Um, the flood is used by proponents of yak to explain almost all observations that scientists have interpreted as pointing to a significantly older earth. Uh, we'll talk about this in a little bit. Um, part of the creation is science. I can't wait. Um, oh, yes. I'm a wreck so, right now. I'm a yek right now. Um, <laughs> well done. <laughs> young Earth creationism shares a lot of its roots with Seventh-day Adventism, or SDA as I'll shorthand it. Um, Ellen White, who was a co-founder of SDA, uh, could be viewed as the creator of yek. Uh, she proclaimed that the earth was created in seven uh, literal days and furthermore that the flood had rearranged the geological record, which are both key elements of Yek. Um, enter a fellow SDA member, George McCready Price, a religious writer and teacher uh, for teaching credentials because I wanted to make sure I emphasize this because anytime I talk about a um, person that likes to 
uh, hypothesize about science, I like to mention their actual true job or occupation. Okay. Uh, he was a rel- religious writer, and he taught, but for teaching credentials, he had enrolled in a one-year teaching training course where he took entry-level courses in the natural sciences, uh, specifically mineralogy. Um, he wrote such... such uh, bleh, uh, there's that... Can I just yeah, exactly. say before you get too far afield off of this as well that I just don't trust any human being that hyphenates their last name. True. Oh no, no, no. That that wasn't his uh that it was George middle name McCready, last name Price. Why the but, hell are you including his middle name? That's what was on the fucking website, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> How often do you introduce people who are not serial killers with their middle name included? Um You didn't include it for the lady <laughs> Who was, you know, the founder it, of Yeah. It wasn't listed. It was I think it was Ellen G. White. So her middle name wasn't as important as Mr. Okay. McCready Price. He just really well, wanted to flex so. that Mick Bastard a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. I yes, can say yes. I'm Irish. just gonna note for the record in case any of you people that are hyphenates out there, I don't trust you. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't trust people with hyphens and I don't trust horses. Those are the main two things that I distrust in this world. Uh, yeah, I, there's no handbrake on a horse. That's what I'm saying is Can't that trust you are just you basically a horse to me. Yep. The fuck? Okay. <laughs> um, so a literal horse. Mr. <laughs> I'm not Sarah Jessica Parker. Uh, 1,500 <laughs> pounds of hate. <laughs> Dang, you didn't have to talk about her weight like that. Um, Mr. Price. Well, she's Mr. been uh, <laughs> carrying her husband, Matthew Broderick, since the late 80s. So, I mean, that alone is a weight that's almost unbearable. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, so, Mr. Price wrote such works as the uh, new genealogy. New- fuck. The new geology. <laughs> fuck. Geology. <Ass>. Fuck- fuckology. <laughs> Fuck all, yes, the new geology in 1923 to advance what he termed new catastrophism and dispute the current geneal- geological uh, time frames and explanations of geologic history. I'm just going to say you did this all to yourself. You truly did. <sighs> you chose this yeah. topic, and it's your mealy-mouthed attempt to get through it that is going to kill you and cause the stroke. Also, on Ugh. on topic, like I get like wanting to understand the universe and like your place in it and all that existential garbage, but at some point, like, why do you have to make it so fucking complicated on yourself as a person? You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I ask myself that every time I hear someone talking about flat Earth theory and how like the the flat earth is like accelerating away from an infinitely long dark matter plane and that's what generates the gravity it's like, like yeah but what did you do today with your own life you fucking nerd well here's yeah, the thing it's like why <laughs> people have a dire and desperate need to be right and to function wherein their rationale is the absolute rationale and as evidence of this for instance let's say someone were to establish a podcast and ask other people to be on that podcast with them, and then purchase an ungodly expensive microphone, and then blame every single, like, misuse of said microphone on something other than the microphone and their inability to use it. Wait. Very akin to individuals who will say that, no, 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 contrary to all science proving that this universe was created long ago, it obviously has to be something else, like God didn't want us to know, and so... You know. This weirdly I will, sounds I, I will say for the yeah I know I will it's say kind of for strange. the record, for the record, I'm not discounting my ineptitude at technology. Thank God. I'm <laughs> saying it's not the microphone's fault. It's everything else, including and specifically pointed at myself. Operator error. We're gonna we're gonna start there. Yes. But I also that... want to note for everybody listening to this that Michael has claimed his audio quality has been worse than both John's and mine because in the interface we're using, our microphones are causing some sort of lag that makes his microphone perform poorly or come down to their level as opposed it... to him just not knowing how to plug it in or turn it in or turn the volume knob appropriately face it the right way be in the same room with it for more Get him, than five minutes <laughs> so it's it's our microphone's faults that his sound like shit so it's just so we're on topic i will note that while price <laughs> claimed that it... <laughs> so i find it funny so... you chose this topic it's just there's an interesting parallel here oh we love you uh... michael i mean if you weren't here who else could we you know come all over 
fair. Enough. That's my, Somebody's got to be um, in the barrel. That's all I'm saying. Also, I the I think I, I, we need a hands check, guys, because we're not in person right now, and I need to make sure that you guys aren't touching yourself. <laughs> I've been doing it the whole time. That makes sense. Why? Why do you need that? Does Does that help you get off or something? Uh, like, well, the commu- I'm a hands the, guy. Jesus, the conversation is not stimulating, so I have to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> ah, man. You're just laying on thick and heavy tonight. Uh, okay. I will know. Okay, so I, I mentioned that Price wrote books. He's He wrote a lot of books. Uh, most of them talked about Yuck. new catastrophism, pretty much him discounting everything that like scientists have done about geology. Um, I will note that while he claimed his book-selling travels – Gave him invaluable firsthand knowledge of field geology. Um, his familiarity with the outside world remained rudimentary, as in he didn't know much about it. Um, with even his own students noting that he could barely tell one fossil from another on a field trip shortly before he retired. <laughs> so I wanted to add that and keep that in there just because like, it's interesting to see even his own students um, He's who aren't – yeah, who aren't geologists, who, yeah, are learning from, yeah. Um, and that's not That bullshit. are even noting, like, this, it's not. I mean, it, just pointing out, yeah, it's not difficult to doubt the veracity of his claims, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That even when his own students can. <laughs> so his students um, were all pointing at him and screaming posse? Yeah, posse. <laughs> um, oh, it's been a long yes. time since a posse check. Yeah, I had to bring yeah, a posse that out. back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, getting into the last um, section, creation science, uh, dubbed scientific creationism when it originally came and emerged, uh, started as an... It came. Excuse me. It emerged from the void. Behold. As an organized movement, behold, um, during the <laughs> 1960s, it was strongly influenced by the aforementioned work of the, um, according to the article that I'd read, he, they, he was referred to as the armchair geologist, uh, George McCready Price, <laughs> um, which I wanted to keep in because I thought it was great. Um, it was strongly influenced by him. Uh, and another thing that I will briefly touch upon was that his work was also cited at the Scopes trial in 1925, oh. which I would love to do an episode on because I find I did a like a school report in like elementary school on it or something. Okay, like I uh, yeah school or something. I was but, always more of like a Listerine person instead of Scope. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Um, very briefly, Scope's trial was essentially arguing for uh, creation or intelligent design uh, or evolution in uh, schools. Um, and at some point, well, I won't touch but that. That that's it. That's the teaser. So I'll eventually do an episode on that because I really think that it would be an enjoyable thing to talk about because it turns into a media circus and ridiculous shit goes down. Okay, and I'm excited for it. But. Um, Although he frequently solicited feedback from geologists and other scientists, uh, they consistently disparaged his work. Um, his new catastrophism also went largely unnoticed by other creationists until its um, revival with a publication. Pretty much these two guys rewrote his book in the, uh, in the 60s and called it The Genesis Flood, um, which that book became an important test on the issue to fundamentalist Christians. They also mm-hmm. opened up um, for the band Arch Enemy. I believe it. Uh, Makes sense. Who, who are these people? Um, a couple John of people? C. Whitcomb and Henry M. Morris. Do they actually okay. exist? Yes. I, I was going to say, if he, if he came up with names, I was going to believe it. But, you know, when you just blithely throw something off as a couple of guys, it's... Uh, I'm trying to summarize more than just read straight from the text that I already had previously summarized. I can appreciate that. Yes. Um, But that book expanded um, the creation of science from just geology that was established by Price. Um, It expanded into other fields like biology, cosmology, uh, and physics. Um, Soon after that publication, uh, a movement was uh, started to have that subject or those subjects taught in the United States public schools, which I also might cover in more detail in another episode because there were a lot of other trials and tribulations, I guess I would say, that came as of this book and this movement. Um, 
So the last thing I will talk about is just a brief mention of the science, the creation sciences, their fields, um, just touching upon them because they're kind of silly. Shame. Has yeah. has anyone ever justified the belly button principle? Oh, the navel. Yeah. Um, yes. In your in your discussion for the idea that God just decided to put a divot in their bellies. Yeah. No, I don't think about? I saw that. Yeah, that actually is a good point. Well, I think uh, why, so. Why they they gave Adam and Eve the navel? I think that was just because they were human, and so they God wanted to make them equal. But that's just me supposing. It could be some crazy ass answer well, that I. If God don't wanted know. to make them equal, why you know is it that not all men have breasts? I got and a nipple, so you can milk me. Do, all right, Greg. Uh, <laughs> or just some of these things, like I really, I, I just wish there would be a little bit more rationale or logic put into it. If they're going to go through these lengths to justify these other things, you can't just kind of compartmentalize those things that make no sense at all and just disregard it and be like, "Well, we'll talk about that later." Oh, I, I, we haven't even gotten started. I'm uh, sure you want compartmentalizing. We're we're going to compartmentalize. All it's, right. I'm, I'm yeah. in. Dial it so, up. So the first one I'm going to talk about is creationist uh, biology, uh, also known as created kind or kinds. Um, so to be brief, popular arguments against evolution are as follows. There are missing links in the fossil record. And, and this one is the one that pissed me off the most, increased complexity of organisms over time through evolution is not possible due to the law of increasing entropy. So essentially, the whole I very briefly, the idea of entropy is that as time moves on, things become more disordered. So the idea that something becomes more complex over time doesn't jive with the idea of entropy, which is definitely incorrect. Now, entropy says that such possibilities become less likely, but it doesn't say that it's impossible. So I made an analogy. You flip a coin enough times while you record whether it's head or tails, eventually you'll get 50% heads and 50% tails, but there's still a chance that you can flip, a, uh, flip heads, come up heads 50, 100, or even million times in a row if you just do it enough times. It's statistically unlikely, but it's still possible that you right. can have that sort of complexity. It's just, it, it occurs. And if you look at the whole universe and you look at just this little piece of nothing in the middle of the universe or to the side, whatever, um, it makes a lot more sense that you can justify that, okay, well, you look at it a long enough time or you look at a large enough area, it makes sense that there's something of this complexity could arise it's just very, very unlikely. That's why we don't have, an, or we don't have creatures living on the moon, living on Venus, living on Mars, living on every other planet of Jupiter. Like, it's statistically unlikely, but it's still possible. Well, and you can't just play purely on statistics either, because I mean, you exactly. do have to treat things holistically, so they don't operate in a vacuum. So saying, yeah. you know, there were all of the requisite parts here that facilitated life existing on this planet. I mean, just we've even seen mutation over the course of the last few hundred years of particular species. So we've seen that in practice. It's observable. And that's within a really short time frame, considering from an evolutionary scale. So to kind of cast that off as saying like, well, it couldn't happen because, you know, it's it's too complex. Like, if you believe all life on this planet began as single-celled organisms, I mean, that's difficult to kind of reconcile. But, I mean, you still see an easier correlation between us and primates than you would, you know, just taking a swing and a miss and saying, like, oh, well, no, cavemen didn't exist. We just all, all plopped down on the earth like this. With navels. With navels right. and perfectly formed and, you know ribs missing from you know men that just magically got reconciled at some point later on in, in life yeah so to describe their idea of created kinds so it's an idea derived from genesis that states that life was created by god obviously in a finite in a f finite in a finite number of created <laughs> kinds rather than biological evolution from a common ancestor so the idea is that dog he created dog. He created chimpanzee. He created human. Platypus. Dog is dog. Huh? Platypus. Platypus. Yes. 
Yes, exactly. Well, that's an aberration. And then no, dog fuck I love dog. Platypi. Man fuck and dog. Platypus fuck fucks platypus. all. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they also consider, and this is, you mentioned even mutations and evolution, microevolution. Uh, creationists consider that any observable speciation, so splitting like a Chihuahua versus a Great Dane, descends from these distinctly created kinds through inbreeding. So essentially, they agree with microevolution, like dog breeds, but they disagree with macroevolution. That, like, a dog has a common ancestor to a bear. So they're already rationalizing and compartmentalizing, like, oh, well, you know, Chihuahua is related to a Great Dane, and if you try hard enough, they can mate. Um, very hard, though. But and how? it's still possible that they can produce offspring. Or, like, say, a, uh, a donkey and a horse produce a mule, right? Um, so, like, a, yeah. Yeah. six degrees of separation of breeding? <laughs> so the south park principle of an elephant making love to a pig is not possible according to these people yes well i mean they can just nothing will come from it oh they'll be oh come. there will be <laughs> <laughs> synced up beautifully well done <laughs> beautiful love it um so the next one is creationist geology um most of earth's geological record was formed by the great flood which was described in Noah's Ark. Uh, fossils and fossil fuels were formed from animal and plant matter, which was buried rapidly during this flood, while submarine canyons, so canyons that are underwater, uh, are explained as having formed during the rapid runoff from the continents at the end of the flood. This is also where I was going to mention the Black Sea Deluge hypothesis, because I mentioned that at some point um, offhandedly or off mic. Deluge, um, but, you know, that's fine. Dilute. That's how I. Uh, anyway, um, it's his. It's a, a speech impediment. Okay. The de, Delu deluge, deluge is something that they do as an Olympic event with a bunch of Jamaican guys in a movie. Ah, a deluge I know of that movie. is you know a rapid rainfall in mass yes. quantities. Well, then that's how you pronounce it. Or my it, ejaculate. Then. Um. And how? Deluge. Um. But yeah. So that's. That's the whole idea. Why are you sending pictures while we're recording? I also love that, like, what's funny to me is just for those who may not ever get to see the video of this, like, John and I are both sitting here like reasonable, <laughs> rational people with lights on, and Michael just keeps descending further and further into darkness yeah, the, the only as his room is just, you know, only lit by his computer screen. Which is the room that we have recorded up to, like, what, there would be 31 episodes in? There! Like so, he's never like just been like, all right, guys. So the sun's gonna, the sun's already down. So you know, we're just gonna record by the light of the computer screen. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's my current, that's my usual it's environment. My, I, I don't it's like my the, hypothesis see. that he's not even wearing pants right now. And I mean, I couldn't blame him. It was, it took a lot of effort for me to wear. Please don't, don't show us. <laughs> put your penis away. Uh uh. Nope. It's out. It's staying out. It's here to oh, stay. Man. Um. There are rules. So yeah, that's. <laughs> so that's the idea behind the creationist geology and the the new catastrophism that uh mr price had mentioned was that everything was set by the great flood so it wasn't even that like god was like and there's a fossil there and there's a fossil there it's more like oh yeah there were dinosaurs and everything before the flood and then they all died and were buried and that's why we have oil and we also can't because they were buried quickly. We can't talk about volcanism or any of you know the tectonic plates shifting or anything else like that, and magma spewing up and forming island chains. That's not reasonable to expect. The Great Flood did it. Yeah, <laughs> floods did caused it that. Out. Yeah. Well done. Um. Uh, so I'll I'll just I'll briefly mention the Black Sea deluge um, hypothesis. It was the idea. So uh, I, I assume you guys don't know geography. I know um, hardly the anything. Black Sea. Exactly. I have taken uh, a geology course. Thank you. <laughs> the Black Sea is uh, north of the country of Turkey. It's named Duwan. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> it is south of <laughs> Russia. <laughs> oh, come in him. It is. What? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but anyway, the idea was that uh, they had found a. Some geologists, I believe, had found record of rapid flooding at some point, 
um, in the last 6,000, 8,000 years. Uh, and they found settlements under the water. And so they hypothesized that um, where Istanbul sits today, which is on a, um, an isthmus, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's essentially there's a strait right there, a little mm -hmm. small, narrow uh, passageway where water can flow through. Right. And they believed that that was actually like a, a moat of some – or um, uh, like a wall of some sort of dirt. And there was a difference in water levels between the Black Sea and the Mediterranean, and that at one point it burst it, like a dam, and it burst and flooded that. And that rapid flooding, um, which was taken by the people that lived in that area that moved away, uh, that legend was spread, and that's why you see evidence of the Great Flood in a lot of other early religious myths, like uh, the Sumerians, like because uh, I think that occurred in Hammur – no, not Hammurabi – uh, it was an old. I can't remember. We're we're, head, we're getting lost but, in the weeds here, Michael. Oh yeah. But, but essentially, <laughs> essentially, they found things that suggest otherwise. So, yeah. Um, so I won't take it as fact. Cool. All right. So creationist astronomy and cosmology, because to mention, um, we know that the universe is very big because it takes light a long, long time to get from one point to another. So. To explain how big that universe is, um, several theories state that either the speed of light has decayed since the beginning of the universe, um, or, and this is my favorite one, which makes no sense to me, it's called white hole cosmology. I, I, oh, I, I was waiting for you guys to make a joke about it. No, that. I mean, I, um, I have volume one. I watched it at least three times. It made me the horniest <laughs> I've ever been in my life. Science is nothing to Thank make you. a fucking joke of, Michael. So can you just please take this seriously for one goddamn second? It is a serious <laughs> offense to mock God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so white hole cosmology, uh, which suggested that the universe expanded out of a white hole less than 10,000 years ago, and that the apparent age of the universe results from relativistic effects. John's so, going to be calling his dick the white hole from this point forward. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Greg. The universe expanded. <laughs> uh, so white hole is essentially an anti-black hole, just for... Wow. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, racist. Well done. Okay. Instead of sucking things in, it expel things outward. Okay. So take that as you will. Um, so the last thing I will mention uh, is creationist physics, uh, which was the, the current theory is that the fundamental forces of physics were personally fine-tuned by God to benefit humans. Oh, well, that makes all the sense in the world. Mm -hmm. You cannot so. – here's the thing. You cannot argue against God. Like, I, when you've contrived something, I mean, if you just rally any creation myth that has ever been concocted, and I mean any, from the one that, like, the moon was a bead stolen out of a bag by a raven and then placed up into the sky, like, how do you argue against that? It's not observable. We have absolutely nothing to contextualize it or compare it to. So it's like, if there is just this sort of divine omniscient creator that exists out there like it's just it's the automatic trump to any argument it's like well god did it okay yeah i mean that's the whole idea behind the uh ohm Fallos hypothesis is that well well god did it and what's your proof against it well he put it there the test <sighs> it's literally just saying yeah prove it yeah prove it do it you won't. Yeah. yeah. It just no balls. turns into picks or it didn't happen. You right? don't have the yeah. fucking balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, where did that voice come didn't... from? Please tell me. Um, it's an episode of South Park and it's uh, Cash for Gold is the episode. Okay. And it's the infomercials, you know, call in to, to buy X item on the line. And essentially, everyone's kind of hip to it being a scam. So you get this this elderly folk. Because the joke is that the elderly are the only ones that buy off those infomercials. Okay. Um, and the end of the episode is everyone calling in to try and get the host to kill himself. And he says on air, he's like, if if I get one more of these calls, I, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to fucking do it. And then an old lady calls in. She's like, you don't have the fucking balls <laughs> just put put the gun in your mouth and pull the trigger <laughs> uh, i have Damn. i have not watched south park for a good long while I, it, it hurts my soul i need to i'll try to find that clip okay 
All right. Great. Well, Michael, uh, so, please carry us away. All right. So in the uh, omphalos, omphalos, oompa loompa hypothesis, um, I mentioned that no empirical evidence about the age of the Earth or universe can be taken as reliable. Then I mention the only thing he argues that is reliable is the fact that we all exist, which he mentions as I think, therefore I am. Which not was that not that person. Yeah. Yep, Philip Henry Goss Goze. I'm calling him Goze now. I, I don't. Care I, I would think, yeah, um, it's a good way to go. Zay. Yes. And now um, he's just somebody that we used to know. Ha. Uh, I think, therefore, I, I am was Rene Descartes. Yes. And I actually made, and I know how to pronounce his name. It's not De- Descartes. Descartes, yes. Um, yes, Rene Descartes. But he was the one that argued that, and I threw that in there. I, um, I you know, I, I'll be honest. I heard it in the moment, and there's just so much of this nonsense yeah. that was spewing out of your mouth that I, I couldn't <laughs> bring We're myself really to try to remember. We're really bad at winning the game that's not important. Hey, we did really well last week. I'm just gonna, you know, yeah, throw that yeah, out for the uh, the COVID stuff. We were we were on it. We were on the bleeding edge. What's COVID? You you guys were. Damn it! I broke anyway. my own rule. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was alluding to our own things. The conversation we had things. last week yes. that I don't remember. Um, but okay, so the this next lie is kind of a a little bull, but I was okay with it because I figured one of you guys would point okay. out. So you're so I said that the universe was created in seven days. It technically six. was created. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Sorry, yeah. God's a lie anyway. So I just kind of like filed it under like bull. <laughs> <laughs> don't give a shit. <laughs> But yeah, well, I I was happy. I I knew that you, like Shane wouldn't um catch it because you even mentioned seven days like earlier at seven some point. Days. And so exactly. Yeah. So I was like, well, cool. I can get that passed uh with nothing. Um, In the same the way that like one... you sneak your girlfriend onto all the amusement park rides, like oh she doesn't have to be this tall to ride it. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> do you just put? Well, do you I... just put? her daughter and her like in one big trench coat to get her through height restriction they're basically like minions (laughs) he just smuggles them together in one place banana um but and the last light uh that one i kind of like threw that together in last minute uh the creationist physics um i didn't see anything that mentioned that the fundamental forces were fine-tuned by god to benefit humans i had seen that somewhere else a long time ago that someone's using, but I don't think that's necessarily um, part of the creationist science mindset. I was listening to you, and I still don't know what the fuck you just said. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Uh, uh, maybe it's because you do this in a an official capacity from time to time, but I just tune out a lot when you talk about science <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I, I get that a lot. No, I do. If I had a dollar every time, um, someone was like, wait, what did you say? I'm like, that's fine. I, I, just, uh, I would be very rich. I think we've we've really one we have bludgeoned anyone you know uh, of the quote unquote Abrahamic uh, religions so much over the past three to four weeks, and now between all the scientific principles that we have been extolling the virtue of, I think like we have reached our mental saturation point with you know knocking the Christians and introducing scientific principles that they do or do not believe in my own head as I'm hearing this. Yeah. So, um, going back and reviving part of the format to do like a 30 second elevator. I was, pitch, I was going to just... ask. I love I... <laughs> now <laughs> you haven't gotten a single coherent sentence out in the entirety of this whole fucking show. So if you can get it down to 30 seconds, I'm going to eat my hat in front of you. Well, now, okay. Shane is going to be, uh, you know, the sour part, and I'm going to be the, the, the sweet part. Yeah. Sweet? Uh, I have enjoyed most of the elevator pitches that you have somehow managed to get out of your mouth in the past. So, please, Michael, what did you just subject me to? I want you to succeed. I'm just waiting for you to fail. We are your biggest fans. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to look at the timer, and I'm going to say uh, as soon as it hits... A certain time on mine, then I'll actually time myself. So the whole idea behind young earth creationism is that God created the universe 6,000 years ago and put everything in its place so that we would think otherwise. And if you think otherwise, then you're falling for his trap. Um, yeah, God did it. Well done. 
I, well, I mean, you got it in the time, seconds. but again, it, that was the most incoherent bunch of bullshit that you've strung together. Fine. All right, fine, fine, fine. I'll do it again. He put it in place God created the universe. so that it would be in place, and if you don't believe it's in place, <laughs> then it's wrong. God did it. God did it. There you go. That is an effective way to explain it. Michael. <laughs> fuck you. God did I'm it. I'm proud of you. Even if God <laughs> and Shane are not, I'm proud of you. <sighs> Weeping tears of sadness. We're uh, not supposed to do anything yeah. this side of Worcester. He says. You're gonna keep God doing. says as far as you're concerned. You're going to keep doing drug deals with your stupid cousin? No! I'll tell you one so thing, Michael. Is, uh, you're no fucking cop. Well, yeah. In five years, you could be anything in the world, Michael, but you will not be a member of the Massachusetts State PD. That's true. We've lost okay. him. Uh, it's yep. a quote from the movie The Departed, written, or not written, but at least directed by Martin Scorsese. Um, mm. It's a vehicle that is mainly driven by Matt Damon, um, you know, also Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, I would say there, there. Uh, that's a tandem dive of anything between the two. Yes. Mm, okay. If you've well, not seen right. it, it is authentically in my top five of all time, still to this day, and it has been out for, oh gosh, it's almost twenty years old. Agreed. I, I actually had to watch it the day before yesterday because you and I had talked about it so much. So, yep. Bless you. Hence why I'm there. Thank you very much. All right, <laughs> Michael. Thank you for whatever that was. <laughs> uh thank you for teaching me about god you know i can't wait to you yeah. know, really apply that into uh my satanic way of living mm-hmm. yeah when in doubt god did it well yeah. what if god was one of us just a slob like one of us just a stranger on the bus trying to give you sars <laughs> <laughs> Why are you bringing up SARS? That hasn't like been an outbreak since like 2003 or yeah, something like that. Yeah, I know. That. It's the strangest thing. But, uh, it just popped into well, your yeah, head. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, well. I'm sorry. Real sorry. Sarsy. Super sorry. <laughs> a sorry. Aziz on Sarsy. Got Sexus on Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. So what are we, what are we uh, doing next week? Are we doing uh, loose form or are we going to just plow through no, and do no, one no. more topic? No, no, no. I think we've, we've got we to gotta make up for the fact that we have done a significant amount of loose form. So I think I we're going to barrel right into the Night Witches. Ooh, Stoked. okay. Yes, it's going to be the greatest show about sandwiches that we have ever done. I cannot wait. Oh, yeah, same here. Mm. And uh, I'm I'm sure everything is going to go swimmingly, but if by any form of Michael's, uh, let's call it, mm, ineptitude, if things sound weird. Gross incompetence, yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh my god. Uh... Yes, we will beg your indulgence if there is a loss of fidelity or quality. Yeah, so right? so what, what happened is, you know, when you start a podcast, Jesus. or when we started at least, and I've seen it trend on, on other podcasts as well, like... You, you do your first five to ten episodes to kind of like work out the kinks on best practices. And we did that. And we had this really long, nice run. Um, and now we are changing that again. So we just we kind of like, let's say, cry your pardon if um, anything dips. Say thank you. So. Well, it's not going to. The quality is going to be fantastic. It's yeah. We're all still here. I think the feel might be a little different since we're not in the same room, but I would say, you know, quality-wise, sound-wise, yeah. the stuff that we've done, you know, to test already sounds great to me. And, so. and I would never say this to his face, but I really do appreciate Michael taking uh, so much time out of his week to edit the show uh, and sometimes be a part of it. Um, but again, I would never... <laughs> <laughs> And sponsor it without accepting any money from us. So, yeah, again, I would never say that to him, but I, I do appreciate that a lot. So Yeah, Michael gets shortchanged oh, an awful lot over the course of his life, and we don't intend to continue to do that to him. But, you know, one of these days we're going to make oh, it up to you, sir. Short. It's a tall order, I know. but uh, And talent here is in short supply, but at some point we are going to make it up to you. Eh, just keep showing up to record. That's all I ask. You, we have made that uh, substantially easier to do. Yes. So. Yes, very true. Because I also thought about we can start doing more of the extra things that we had mentioned 
offhandedly in passing a long time ago, like maybe a dramatic reading here. Oh, yeah. Since it doesn't take as much effort, especially on your part, Shane, oh, yes. to drive all the way down here um, to do this. It kind of so opens that it would wide. be. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. Especially because someone doesn't have to worry about work for two mm-hmm. weeks. And John loves it when things are opened wide. And how? Mm-hmm. White hole cosmology. White hole gaping. That's yes. what they call me. Yeah. <laughs> the great white hole. <laughs> I got a few. <laughs> and holier than thou to keep on our Metallica theme. Oh, that's uh, why they call me Unforgiven, Shane. Indeed, that is why they call you Unforgiven, wherever you may roam. Yeah. Uh, so fucking what? All right. You are creeping death. Okay, <laughs> I think now that we're going to ride the lightning on out of here, ladies and germaphobes, thank you for being here with us this week. We have so appreciated you as always. If you enjoy what we do, please find us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. For all of those that love us, please give us a rate and review if you like what we do. And if you want to follow what we're doing on social networks, you can find us on Facebook.com slash Disinformed Podcast, on Instagram at Disinformed Podcast, and on Twitter at Disinformed Pod. And I believe that is going to wrap it up like a glorious sandwich for this week for the Disinformed Podcast. I'm Shane. I am representing the Master of Puppets, and I am John. And I represent the uh, people of ineptitude, especially in the technological sense. Um, I am also known as Michael. And you also represent the Lollipop Guild. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Well, that's my girlfriend. Uh, indeed. Yes. <laughs> watch, watch your ankles, kids. Uh, <laughs> love, peace, and chicken grease. Thank you all for coming. Don't worry. God did it just to, you know. Nope. Nope, he did it just so that we could clean it up. I mean, uh, we've been cleaning it up for millennia at this point. So we'll continue to clean it up. I just want to win best hog in the cum snarfing contest. Oh, well, (laughs) behold. Behold. I bring you good tidings of great joy. Steve Beholt. Behold, (laughs) indeed. Uh, Thank you for coming, kids. Don't worry. We'll deny its existence through science in 2,000 years.